Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Chuck Destro. Uh, I'm here today to show you a little bit of instructions on how to use the all new Swim Meter 2.0's advanced features and online features. Um, so you can see on the screen in front of me, um, I have pulled up some data from one of our Olympians. He was kind enough to send us this data along with a video so that we could go through kind of the, uh, the very cool uh, advanced features that we have available and show you how to use them. So you can see here the date and time he recorded this, his sector velocity, which you can see more in the manual about, but that is basically your speed through a critical section of the pool. It's around the five meter mark. That would be after the breakout. Um, so gonna be pretty much your peak swimming speed or peak uh, traveling speed. Uh, so we found this to be pretty critical and your actual resistance that he, he had in the bucket. So we're gonna go and we're gonna view his lap data. So we can see here, this is his velocity plotted against the position that he is at in the pool. So for instance, at five meter, at the five meter mark, he's traveling at 1.35 meters per second. Um, you can also export this as raw data into CSV, which can be imported to Google Sheets or Excel, and you can break it down however you want into that, that micro data to analyze the stroke. Or you can just see how long it took your athlete to get to 5, 10, 15, 20 meters. Um, and keep in mind, everyone, this is the belt travel. So the belt traveled 5 meters, 10 meters, 15, 20 meters. So um, depending on how tall they are, how long their arm is, 20 meters is pretty close to the end of a short course 25 yard pool. Keep that in mind. Um, and then we have sector power. This is basically just sector velocity um, times or as a factor of how much weight is in the, the bucket. So we travel on to the more advanced features now, which is uh, the video. So we call it Swim Lab right now. Uh, the hardest part about Swim Lab is getting the video synchronized with the data. And I'm going to show you my process for doing that. Um, it's different for every stroke. It's kind of different for every athlete. So you're going to have to play with it and figure out how to get it accurate because that the, the more precise you can synchronize, the more valuable it's going to be to you. So uh, I'm going to import a video. So I'm just dragging my video that's in my download folder over um, and it's going to prepare the environment and import that video. All right, so first thing we have to do is synchronize the video. For this uh, swimmer, he's swimming, this is David Morgan, uh, Australian Olympian. He is swimming butterfly. Butterfly is one of the more difficult strokes to synchronize um, because it's, as you can see, very choppy strokes. So to synchronize this data, we need to set the first marker. So we'll say peak velocity occurred about this point. Um, and then we will need to set where peak velocity occurs in the video with this scrub bar. So we're going to say right after his feet leave the wall, which is call it this frame right here. Okay. And now, um, I like to check to make sure that it looks like it's synchronized, um, but I've already done that. So I hit the restart button that sets everything um, back to zero. Everything is fully synchronized um, and we can watch the video um, with the data um, or we can break it down and step through the video. Later on, we'll have um, playback speed available so you can cut it down to a quarter speed or half speed or whatever you want to look at. Um, but what I'm going to do now is just a little bit of basic analysis just to show you how this tool can be used. Um, we could see, I'm going to take a look at this point here, which it looks like um, peak slowdown. Uh, and I want to see what's going on here, why he slowed down so much. It's, it's towards the end of the rep. Um, so he's probably slowing down a little bit, but we're going to set our step size to 50 and try to get basically right on peak D cell or lowest velocity. Um, you can see here where he is. Um, he's in the, the front of his catch right before the catch starts. So this makes sense that this would be his slowest point. Um, legs are probably 
slowing him down, arms are slowing him down, uh, and he's right about to accelerate as that pull is just starting to speed him up. So uh, I want to look at this and compare it to somewhere where he did this better, which would have been around here, and see if we can see anything in the technique. Okay, so I've taken a screenshot. I basically used my snipping tool to just capture this point in time to see uh, if we go back to where he did this little catch better. He didn't decelerate as much. Let's see if we can see any difference. So I'm going to step back by 500. Okay, we're right about the same position. So let's pull up the screenshot. We can see here um, there may be a little bit of fatigue setting in. Um, but we are seeing still a change in the technique in this phase of the stroke. Um, you see the head position is higher. The back is arched a little bit more, um, creating more of a slight banana shape. And he's also pitched kind of down in the water more um, versus this. His head appears to be more in line with his body, more streamlined shape. Um, and I believe that, that that appears to be what is creating the slight difference in slowdown. We built this tool specifically um, just to do this type of thing and learn. It's definitely going to take a lot more data, a lot more repeats to solidify that this is actually a, a substantial change, something that we want to change in his technique. But it's just something that I noticed right away when I pulled this up and I wanted to share it with you in this tutorial. So um, if you have any questions, as always, feel free to reach out on the Destro Machines website via the Contact Us page. And uh, I hope you get a lot out of this. I know it's a very exciting tool. Um, so thank you uh, for being a customer and uh, have a good day.